it's so great that you're here to, to share this evening with Greg Pallast and, and Fred Friends. So we're really looking, looking forward to this. My name is Anna Chen. Yeah. And I, I can, thank you so um, we have we have we have some really fascinating guests here. We we, we have um, from some of the groups who've been working so hard. Uh, we have the drop uh, the the Jubilee debt campaign. Nick Dearden from from there. John Hillary from War on Want. We have a, we have journalist Laurie Penny and writer Warren Ellis will be speaking. Um, a little bit later. So the way that the format, the way this is going to go uh, tonight is that um, we're going to have a panel discussion later on. It's going to be a bit like question time. So we do want questions from you. Um, there should have been some cards. You should have seen some cards at the front desk. And if you'd like to fill those in, we'll have a look at them. And then we're going to ask the, the, the panel the questions. Um, and when you've written them out, please have, hand them into to registration and then we'll look through them. Afterwards, don't rush off, because at the end of the panel discussion, Greg is going to be signing your books and um, answering uh, questions in person. Uh, the books, the publisher's price is normally 9.99, but of course, because this is a very special occasion, this is the UK launch of Vulture's Picnic, so Vulture's Picnic is on sale at a fiver, which I think is um, pretty good value. I could have been a banker, sitting on a ledge, high up on a skyscraper, because someone clipped my hedge. I could have been in business, in the city, making bids. Take a shotgun to the wife and dogs, and then I do the kids. But I'm just a daily worker, about to lose my home. Savings all depleted, can't even get a loan. The bankers got their billions, the doggy got a bone. The millions got the wankers, whose hearts are made of stone. I can cry into me drink. I can curse the gods above. I'd like to give that banker a bleeding great big shove, watching splat upon the pavement. A human pizza pie, because that's where I'll be living until the day I die. Thank you very much. So I hope, um, as the recession bites, that everyone's been having a really good year. Uh, I don't know if you've been enjoying the Jubilee. Um, I, I feel a bit of effort uh, myself, and this is my little contribution to leveling up as much as the Queen. And I guess we're all looking forward to the Olympics, the Ethical Olympics. It's just great. Every single day something fresh comes out, some new fresh horror. And to do the Olympics, you know, it's like the biggest McDonald's set up right next to this, uh, to, to the Olympic Village. And uh, also now apparently Coca-Cola are keeping their cancer chemical, um, the caramel colouring in, in Coca-Cola. So you just know these are going to be the Ethical Olympics and the and the health Olympics. And definitely, it's like um, we're living in interesting times. It is like the ancient Chinese curse. We're watching every single advance that's been made for the masses, for the working class, since the Second World War being clawed back. And it's not just the 1%, but it's the tiny fraction of a percent who hold the real economic power the Sunday Times rich list, top 1,000, are worth over 440 billion pounds. Corporate profits are at a record high, and bankers are still getting their bonuses. And of course, it's us who are having to recapitalize the gamblers at the top with bailouts and cuts and austerity. But I think the Mayans were wrong about 2012 being the end of the world. 2012 was just a really awful film with some amazing effects and a cute dog. But what it did have that I really liked, and I do like my trash culture, was it had the most amazing cinematic metaphor for what's happening now. In the movie, the super-rich cleave off from the rest of society, 
and escape the super tsunami headed our way in billion dollar a seat ships. So all the richest in the world, they pay their billion dollars and they get a ticket on these ships, which happen to be constructed at the top of the world, which happens to be Tibet, and it's being done by the Chinese, so I told you. I think it was an amazing metaphor. The rest of us die in this cheery vision, and the rich survive to repopulate the world in their own image, and what a really cheery place that's going to be with just as you can imagine, like the royal family, all that inbreeding. So our world is in crisis, and I keep hearing people saying that capitalism is dead. Now I don't think capitalism is dead or even dying, it just smells funny. Capitalism is mutating, and like those ships in 2012, they are going places. Capitalism is going places, it's just not taking us with it this time. In Vulture's Picnic, Feasting with the 1%, Greg Palast provides some jaw-dropping revelations about what the 1% are getting up to. And if the task of the journalist and the artist and the revolutionary is to make the invisible visible, then Greg does this. He ties together various events and practices that mark the lurch towards that 2012 scenario. Our democratic institutions, like the mainstream media and the politicians, had better sit up and take notice and chase it up in order to hold power to account and maybe change the world for the better. Greg, would you like to step through the maze? <laughs> that it is that corner. It's not where you think the door is. It's straight ahead. Don't go downstairs, though. 